Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of the Red Dirt Pioneers. My name is Rachel and today we are going to be making water kefir. One of my favorite recipes to make in the kitchen. This is not only a delicious drink that your whole family can enjoy, it is also extremely beneficial for your health. Um, if you've heard of other probiotic drinks like milk kefir or kombucha, this is falls along the same lines of those two drinks. It is um, a probiotic drink, but each of those different uh, beverages have different beneficial bacteria in them. The stuff is great, it tastes delicious, it's much smoother than kombucha. Kombucha to me is a little bit vinegary, um, a little bit bubbly, and usually it, it keeps a little bit of its sweetness. This has a much milder taste, it does not have a vinegary taste at all, and it gets extremely bubbly, which is my favorite part about it. I love the carbonation, especially on a hot day outside. One of my favorite things to do is come inside and have ice cold water kefir. So. My water kefir grains I bought from a company called Florida Sun Kefir. You can also go to Whole Foods or Natural Grocers and they sell them on their shelves as well. When you receive your water kefir grains in the mail or if you get them off the shelf, um, sometimes they come as dehydrated, but the recipe I'm teaching you today, this is hydrated grains. They come in little containers and each container is about a quarter a cup and a quarter cup of water kefir grains can ferment about four cups or a quart of sugar water. I am gonna be doing a much larger batch because I have been making mine for about three years now and I have really built up my supply of grains. So I make two one gallon containers every three days and that um, makes eight 24 ounce bottles for my family. So I have about a cup of water kefir grains in this bowl. And you're just gonna take the ones that you have in your container, and like I said, it's probably gonna be about a quarter a cup, because that's usually about how many they send you. And you wanna make sure your vessel is cleaned and sterilized. So we're gonna take the kefir grains and we're gonna put them into the vessel that we are going to be fermenting our water kefir in. This is exciting and I am spilling them everywhere. It's okay, I've got plenty. So now that we have the grains in their vessel, the next step is to prepare your sugar water. So for a quarter cup of grains, you are going to do four cups of water to a quarter a cup of sugar. Now I like to use organic sugar for mine, but you can use white granulated sugar. In fact, I have heard that the plain white granulated sugar actually creates a smoother tasting kefir. On your first batch of water kefir, when you receive your grains, your grains are gonna be extremely hungry. So we're going to, going to add a, something a little bit extra into it to really just give them a boost to get started, okay? And that item that you were gonna add is going to be molasses. Now you wanna make sure it's unsulfured molasses. That is very important. It has to be unsulfured or you will kill your grains. If you are just doing a quart size jar, you only need to do about one tablespoon, but that's just going to give those grains a good kickstart and get that ferment going for you and your family. So I just did two cups in here, heated it hot, added three quarters of a cup of sugar in my molasses, dissolved it, and now I'm gonna add in the other 10 cups. And I am going to go ahead and pour this on top of my grains. I like to give it a good stir. I use, these are just 100% cotton napkins that I have. Um, and they're breathable. And I've been using these for three years now. And I've had no issues. So this first ferment is aerobic fermentation. And uh, what that is, is it means that this is fermenting with the help of oxygen. And that is why we're using a breathable material on top so that it can get air. Because these are living organisms and they will use the oxygen in the air to help move forward with this fermentation. Now the second fermentation, that is anaerobic. So there will be no oxygen other than what is in the bottle when you close it up. And that is what's gonna give you that bubbly, fizzy drink. 
Um, so we are done with the first fermentation. We've got our top on. I like to keep it in a cool area of my house. My kitchen is really the best spot. My kitchen is not too sunny. I only have two windows in here and I have a pretty large front covered porch. So there's not a lot of sunlight comes into here. Um, some people like to keep their ferments in the dark. I don't have any issues in this house. And you know, it's kind of covered by the towel. So I just keep it over by my sink. And in about two to three days, it is gonna be ready to bottle. Um, so let me go ahead and put it over in its spot. So by the time we're finished, you're gonna know how to start with brand new grains you've either bought at the store or you got offline. And at the end, you're gonna have delicious water kefir to share with your family. Okay guys, we are now on day three of the fermentation of our water kefir. So this is the first fermentation. I wanna show you first of all the supplies you're gonna to need to set up your second fermentation. I've got my funnel. I have got a third a cup measuring cup, a towel. I've got my flip top bottles. We are gonna hold a little bit of the first ferment back and put it back into our second batch and the rest is going to go into here so these are 24 ounce bottles and for 24 ounces i add in a third a cup you can do it however you want you can add more you can add less i would say if you're going to use like a 16 ounce bottle which is typically what you're going to buy online um i would do like a quarter cup so anyway let's get started and Let's see how this turns out. So let's take the top off. As you can see, you know, we added, remember we added in the molasses, so that's why it's a little more brown this go around. I don't add in molasses every time. I only do it like every second or third ferment, uh, just to give it some extra minerals. You don't want to overdo the minerals. You kind of have to watch your grains. If they are overworking and they're getting too many minerals, they will start breaking apart into small pieces and you don't want that. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to say is there are times that I go a little bit longer on my second ferment because either the day just got away from me, I may be exhausted, but it's ready to go. Like it needs to be done. And if you don't feed these grains, they suffer. So on days like that where I don't have the time to bottle up my water kefir, but it really needs to be done. Something I do that works very well <laughs> is I have bagged prunes in my fridge. They're unsulfured. Again, it's very important. Any dried fruit you add or molasses has to be unsulfured. So if I'm tired, but it needs to be put together for a second ferment and I'm just like, I just can't do it tonight. I open a bag of the prunes and I'll put a couple in here. And that will tide the grains over until the next morning or midday the next day until I can get everything set up to bottle. Those prunes will be completely stripped of their sugar. And they're actually good. I enjoy them. I eat them because they're beneficial. They're fermented. But that'll keep your grains happy until you can get to them. Uh, the other thing I forgot to mention is you're also going to need a vessel to catch the water kefir in. This is plastic. Plastic is fine right now because this is just going to be a quick transfer into here and then from here into a bottle. Uh, anything that's going to sit long term with this stuff in it, it needs to be glass or it needs to be uh, a crock that has been glazed appropriately that can handle acidic food. So just make sure that you have a vessel that is appropriate for this drink. Um, I also have a mesh strainer and this right here is just a... 100% organic cotton cheesecloth because yeah, that's me. I'm the organic girl. All right, so I'm just gonna lay this cheesecloth over the mesh strainer and we are gonna pour. That's all we're gonna do. Just slow, steady pace so we don't make any spills. I made sure that I have a vessel that is large enough that it will not spill over. <laughs> I have done that before. Again, try to remind yourself to hold a little bit back for the next um, ferment. So we're going to go ahead and strain these. A lot of times I'll pick out the healthier grains and only keep those and then I'll feed the rest of the chickens or the pigs. I'm not going to do that right now. It's late. It's not going to hurt anything. So I'm just going to put them all back into this jar. 
my hands are washed and clean, so I, I do handle my grains. I try not to handle them too much. I don't overhandle them, but it is okay to touch them as long as your hands are very clean. Just gonna do that. I mean, they've grown. They've grown in the three days that this has been fermenting. Sometimes you'll see little tiny grains floating around in there. And that's the new babies developing. Remember, pour a little bit back in. Just pour it a little bit. It's sizzling. I don't know if you can hear it. It's already sizzling. This stuff is so good. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. All right, we're going to set that aside. So here, guys, this is our liquid gold. That's what I like to call it. So I'm going to lay out my towel. I should have already done that. This is my towel for any spills. All my clean, sterilized bottles. We have our funnel. I've got my measuring cup. So I'm going to go ahead and pour my juice into each bottle. All right, we're gonna run out, but I have another bottle right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna fill the bottles with the water kefir. You wanna leave room because you want gases to be able to build up in here. If there's no room, then it's not able to really carbonate sufficiently. And this, guys, is the last step of bottling for your second ferment. I always give my bottles a good wipe down because you usually get juice and stuff on the outside. The typical waiting period for my water kefir to get to the perfect taste that we prefer in my family is about two days. Sometimes I'll let it go for three, just depends. Mainly on the temperature. If it's summer, it ferments way quicker. But two to three days is usually about perfect for my second fermentation. One thing you don't want to forget is you have to burp these guys, just like with kombucha. I wanted to show you how bubbly this stuff is. So this has, this sat on my counter for about two days. <clears throat> this is grape kefir, so I use 100% grape juice. But usually I like to have a towel on hand because sometimes when you open the lid, it's like, psh, like a geyser, it just shoots out the top. So um, you can burp it. It's just like with kombucha. You see the fizz as soon as I opened it. I closed it immediately because if I hadn't, it would have went everywhere. But I think, I've already burped this once today. So there it is. See? It's good stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour me some and I'm going to enjoy. And it does, <laughs> well, I mean, that's, just, that's exactly what it does. So I'm going to give this a minute to calm down because it's pretty, got a pretty nice head on it. And I'm gonna enjoy me some chilled water kefir. All right, guys, thank you so much for bearing with me tonight. I know it's probably rather a long video because I do like to talk, but I also wanna give you all the information that I have. I am still learning. I don't know everything about water kefir, so I do want to encourage you to read for yourself and to learn about this wonderful, delicious, healthy drink that I think would benefit you and your family. I just really want you guys to give it a try so that you can experience the health benefits that my family has experienced. All right, guys, again, thank you so much for spending time with me tonight. Until next time, take care and God bless. Cheers.